Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to anyone by whom they come. It would be better if you, if a millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea than for you to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If another disciple sins, you must rebuke the offender, and if there is repentance, you must forgive. And if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve us while I eat and drink? Later, you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. The apostles said to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. Grace, peace, and love from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The apostles say to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. They are sensing that Jesus is inviting them yet again to adopt an outlook on life that is contrary to all their right-handed notions of how life ought to be lived. They hear in these remarks about saving littleness and unlimited life laying down forgiveness, a command to act contrary to all their normal instincts. And they conclude quite naturally that they haven't got the spiritual resources to sustain it, it seems. Such a program that Jesus is laying out. Jesus' reply, though, is a shocker. In spite of the fact that his words, these words, if you had faith as big as a mustard seed, a very, very tiny, small seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, pull yourself up by its roots and plant yourself in the sea and it would obey you. Those words have been given all kinds of admonitions to make a greater spiritual effort interpretation. However, they seem on balance to mean just the opposite. The apostles ask for more faith. However, Jesus tells them that even if they had less faith than they have now, faith like a mustard seed, the preposterous and the impossible would seem as easy as pie and as sensible as shoes. He tells them, in other words, that even when it comes to faith, they don't have to be winners. Increase our faith? Let me delve into the faith thing a little bit. Faith, we seem to approach faith from a perspective that it is spiritual, that it is something that a parishioner comes to the pastor and says, I think I've lost my faith, or I'm not sure of my faith, or I question my faith. And believe me, we get these things all the time. We hear this all the time. It seems to me that our faith, we think, must be so certain. Look at what Jesus says about the magnitude of our faith. If you had a faith as the size of a mustard seed, a tiny faith, you could do amazing things in the name of Jesus. You can survive hardships and obstacles if you had the littlest amount of faith. 
to those who profess to me that they question their faith to the point of saying, I am not sure that I have faith anymore. My brothers and sisters, if you are questioning your faith, if you are questioning your faith, you have faith. If you are unsure of your faith, you have faith. If it were not so, what are you unsure of? What are you questioning? You can't be unsure or question something that isn't there. You do have faith. How much do you need? A little tiny bit. That's all you need. And even if you think you can switch faith off, even if you say no to Jesus all your life and forever after as well, you still die and out of your death, Jesus still raises you. That's how the universe works. Not by the endless refinement of spiritual gas. It is by Jesus' words when he says, If I be lifted up, I will draw all to myself. He gets every last one of us. Now just a few more words on faith. I know that I've been focused on it, faith that is, but let me clarify faith a little further and maybe convince those who are tormented or concerned about their faith. In the words of the readings in Hebrews, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Through faith we understand that the world's were formed by the word of God. Everything was started in the spirit. But faith is not some abstract thing. Faith has substance. Faith is doing something for someone. Faith is not abstract. It has flesh. It is alive in us, not some nebulous thing that comes and goes. Faith is real. It is part of our reality. And in that light, let me hear you say, faith is part of me. Let me hear you say that. Faith is part of me. Faith is part of me. Faith is alive. It's a faith thing. But back to the end of the story. Jesus ties off the threads of this tissue of littleness and leastness with a kind of half parable just to make sure that the apostles understand clearly that they must not turn faith into a work. He sets before them a mental exercise. Suppose he says that one of you has a slave that comes in from 12 hours hard labor in the field. What do you say to him? Have a seat, Mishka, and let me get you some chopped liver and a little chicken soup. You don't say that. You, stay in, you sit, instead say, Mishka, rattle those pots and pans and give me some supper, then you can eat. And do you thank him when he does it? You do not. It was his job. Jesus is saying, remember that the next time you want some super faith or expect me to be super happy because you think you've got it. You've got only one job to do, and that's to drop dead for me. That's all I need from you. That's it. Because everything else that needs doing, I do, Jesus says. And I'm not going to thank you for what you do, because no matter how nifty any of it may be, it's all useless for my purposes, all tainted like even your faith with our boring commitment to winning. Jesus says, I'm just going to come to you in your death and raise you up with my life and then say, Mishka, come on up here with Abraham and Lazarus and all the rest and let you and I have a ball. So I gave it my best shot. 
Thankfully, it ends the series of difficult to understand words of Jesus. While the story in the gospel takes many turns, scandal on, children, a millstone around your neck, it all comes down to a story of faith. That's our job. And we don't need much. We can have just a little faith, and that is sufficient. Everything else that is necessary for our salvation, Jesus will take care of. Jesus will take care of. Because God loves you, and so do I. Amen.